Right. Here we go. Right, hello engineer, you're in charge of operating lead locomotive number 69 with a freight from Idaho Springs to Golden. The trains you're losing are coal fired, so you shouldn't have many problems. You will terminate at Rusco to allow high priority freight to pass. After passenger service, lead loco 65 passes. You'll make your way to Idaho Springs, concentrating mill siding one to collect your wagons. So if we look outside, we've got this passenger train leaving actually in front of us. Once he's gone a bit of a way up the line, then we'll be able to uh, clear the line out to get over there. We are going uh, out here, back to these wagons in here, uh, and then we're going to get on down the line. This is a bit of the line we haven't done yet on the stream, which is good. I need to do the title while we're waiting, good point. Uh, this is small and mighty. Uh, and it's deadly Dorito scenario. Although I have edited it, there's a problem with the one on, on Workshop at the moment. It's on the Clear Creek with the B4D. Clear Creek. Right, can we change this junction? Yes, we can change the junction. Right, off we go. Release the brakes. Reverses in forward. Now at the moment I'm not going to fire up to 75% because I don't know, at the, I think we're going downhill which means I don't have to worry too much. You don't want to ever let your fire mess get down too far, too much beyond ideal um, and you can run out of fire mass which will end the game, same as you can run out of water which ends the game. Can you release updates for scenarios? No, you have to delete and re-upload the scenario, Deadly Dorito. Put the uh, brakes back into self-lapse. Bring the reverse it back a bit. Is this the only narrow gauge route for train sim? No, the um, South African route is Cape Gauge, which is narrow gauge. The uh, Forest Trail is narrow gauge. Um, I think the Chinese stuff is narrow gauge as well, but I can't be sure about that. It's very slightly downhill here, so I'm going to put a little bit of brake on. release it because we're going a bit slow now. I don't think they did 14 L's back here, did Lizarito. This is a bit before um, FRA. Good night, Corpanissium. Folks, I'm just going to give you advance warning now. I think I'm going to skip off the last one from tonight and just finish the scenario with this one. Um, just because it's 11 o'clock now. We've been running three hours, so this will be four hours by the time we finish this scenario. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll leave the uh, we'll leave the other scenario off uh, and I'll look at doing the Feather River Canyon scenario uh, another time. Apologies if you're looking forward to it. Brakes on. So flapped again. Right, now we need to come back to here and get those cars. I'll do a little bit of subnautica after this, Dr. Anthony, because I just want to get that Cyclops built. It's going to be midnight by the time we finish this scenario.
Look. That's it. Coupled. Right, we've got full clearance towards Golden. Cuts off forward, breaks in himself laps. Start bringing the cut off in. I'm going to put some water in. So I'm using the HUD so you can see what I'm doing with the firing. There's a slow curve and automatic stoker. Um, I think in reality, no, it's shoveled by the fireman. Switches set in inopportune positions. Why are the locos uh, working in multiple? You'll have to ask the big Dorito. He set the scenario up. So I've just applied a little tiny bit of brake, and that's we're actually now just about holding the speed. Put it back into self lapsed. We're slowing down a little bit, back up to self lapsed. So you can see we've got quite con fine control over the speed. Oh, right, it's a mechanical stoker. Okay. All right, Dr. Anthony, I don't know. I haven't read the manual for this one yet. More locos, more steam goodness. There you go, Deadly Dorito. I think that sounds like a perfectly plausible explanation, frankly. Uh, Brooks Rail, you know what? A little bit of speeding actually is is preferable to jamming the brakes on and constantly and almost stopping the train, just to make sure you don't. If you can point one over, it's not the end of the world. I know the game shouts at you, but in reality, Guz B74, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Yeah, you can run standard game stop on this route if you want Xeg, and as you say, it just looks very strange. Does Clear Creek have had an advanced version? No, nope, it just it, it doesn't have an advanced version. This is as advanced as it gets. It just works with the HUD out the box. There are some other, um, like there is an auto fireman on it, so you don't even have to worry about the fireman if you don't want to.
Tutorial was helpful. Oh, that's good, Gus. Thank you. I'm glad. You, I'm glad that was useful. No, this isn't advanced mode, Doctor Anthony. I mean, my tutorial I just gave doesn't really give you everything about steam engines, but I'm hoping it will give enough to uh, to get the hang of it. Most challenging route to drive a steam loco on. Weirdale in the K4 is very challenging. This is quite challenging. Some of the bits on this route are quite challenging. You really need to be watching the firing because uh, if you don't do the firing, you won't get up the hills. Bowling lift lover, yes, there is a stream tomorrow. One point three pounds of brake pressure on. That's how little you need to uh, achieve reasonable braking. We're only really going on a gentle uh, drop at the moment, but looks like the drop is going to start getting a little bit harsher. Does a route come with advanced mode? No, locos come with advanced mode. Yeah, the FEF3 on just about any route is uh, is tough, BNSF. <laughs> the Connie is, uh, is a really nice route, loco to drive as well in advanced mode, that's a real challenge. In fact, if, you're, if your aim is to drive the FEF, I would say get the Connie first, master it, and then move on to the FEF. DTM's back up, yes, Gav. And it'll be Wednesday, the next one. No, these are the locos in the route, Dr. Anthony. They are just, it's the B4D is the loco, and it doesn't have an advanced mode. They, they pretty much are, they're like normal steam engines, and most of the, just about all the functionality is there and working. And they, they work quite well. Not sure what else you'd add them with, add to them in advanced mode, to be honest. Oh, the Black 5 can be challenging on a tough scenario, on a tough grade, um, the NSF. Nothing sad about that. Any steam engine in the in a right scenario can be made tough. And any steam engine in the right scenario can be made easy. Engines are tough to drive because of the uh, environment you're driving them in. When's the next coding strip? I'm not sure, Dave. I need to do one because I need to get some work done on TS Connect.
Cheers, Bambic Burned. Dilly Juito, loves every moment is a screenshot. Yeah, this, this route is just full of screenshots, isn't it? It's beautiful. Does double heading cause problems? Double heading only clearly causes problems. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, on this one it's actually reading the same. I think it's because I'm the front. If I'm if I'm this one, then I think the HUD reads that one and the F5 just reads this one. So because I'm the front loco, all is good. It's because it's when you're that loco, and if you're running the big boy, you are essentially that loco. Is there a way to script snow where you can't use a sander? Well, essentially, if you make it to where you always just set the sander to zero every time you can, then the player can't turn the sander on, because every time they try and turn it on, I'll just get immediately switched back off again. So all articulated locos in the game are double-headed. Yeah, essentially, if you imagine internally, a, an something like a big boy is done as a tank engine with a tender engine behind it, essentially is how it's structured internally. Good evening, White Mead. Uh, I'm not sure, White Mead. I might be juggling things around a bit um, because Chatham Mainline came out today, so um, <coughs> yours might get bumped to Monday, I'm afraid. There's a PC running F-119, it's running beautiful, thank you. BNSF on some steam locos and sorry, the front axle separate from the body. Those are going to be the articulated locos and it's because you can only, in, in train sim you can only have a single set of powered um, um, uh, wheels or powered axles. So if you want multiple two sets of powered axles that move separately, then you need to have, they need to be implemented as two locomotives. So that's why essentially you've got a locomotive there that doesn't have a body; it's just got wheels. Custom hitcher should be signaling the rear engineer with a whistle. I <laughs> wouldn't even know where to begin with that. <laughs> I've installed Skype on the new PC. Yeah, I've got Skype on the new PC. Right, where are we anyway? We're making our way down the line. We've got to make it to Forks Creek. Remember the one of the last scenario we did. We started at Forks Creek uh, and went all the way up to the um, the switchback.
Oh, we're on 0 0.8%. Let's get some more water in. I thought the nickname of the Q1 was the uh, coffee pot. Ugly duckling, I thought was the 70. I guess some trains have got multiple nicknames. <laughs> A lot of the reason this line would have been 12 miles per hour is actually because the construction quality of the line uh, just wasn't up to it. Um, it wasn't up to high speed or anything. I realise you haven't got lights on. Well, we did actually put the switch. They just hadn't been. Uh, they had the switch hadn't passed its message on the game. doing reasonably well at the moment in terms of braking. We're holding 11.7. Is it a fictional route, AMC? No, it's real. It's just it's a, a very, very old route that's long gone. Microscopic bread loaves on wheels. I never heard that one before. <laughs> When and why was the route taken away? I have no idea, Deadly Dorito. I don't know the history of the route. I think it's one of those things that um, better ways of doing it. The trucks come along and uh, a lot of the, uh, the railways got torn up. Ah, oh, dear Deadly Dorito fan says... Uh, 1941 and 1943, the mines ran out of stuff to mine economically. And yeah, trucks. <laughs> Ooh, trucks. Deadly Torito, does this route go uphill at all or is um on this journey? Or does it uh is it just stay on a gentle down all the way?
four and a half miles to go. Only because if it was up here, we'd never be able to test it. <laughs> Starting to give speed up now. Welcome, Seld. MC6443, I'm running it on Windows 10 right now. No problems at all. So, GK, if you um, go back to the previously in the stream, I ran two scenarios on Chatham Mainline. One with the 465 that comes in the main product, and one from the Class 421 that comes in the BR Blue um, diesel electric pack. I thoroughly enjoyed it, actually. It's the first time I've seen that route, and I really enjoyed that run. I'm looking forward to some more. What's up with these timings? Our ETA to Forks Creek is going up and up and up and up and up.
this era Britannica is a um, like a steam era. Check how much disk space you've got left. Reboot the machine, to be honest, is one of the things I've found helps massively. Reboot the machine and see whether or not that... You might find something has locked the files. downhill again now, so speeding up. A little bit of brakes. I would suggest talking to Steam directly on that one, Britallica. That won't be the uh, game. There's something that Steam is doing that it's getting upset about. If you have a look in the Steam folder in Program Files, there is a Logs folder. Have a look at some of the latest logs in there and see if you can see any errors in them. That might point you at a problem as well. Installing Steam help. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Well, um, the logs would hopefully tell you why it's uh, giving that error. Leader wasn't ugly. Leader was lovely. speed around 12 and a half at the moment. 2% grade at the moment. How are we doing? Oh, we're not got that far now to go. 2.8 miles. Bring in the hand car. <laughs> Welcome back, Butter Mister.
Yeah, there is the caboose as well, of course. Don't forget the caboose. We've got the uh, view at the back as well. Why have we got to reinstall train sim, right car? Cheers Darkness Monster, good luck tomorrow. Down a two and a half percent gradient now. Butter Mister, yep, that was indeed the last record in 2013. That's why I say, if you camera and one have a go at doing that, then you need a plan. You need to work out what your path is going to be. What's the optimum path? It's more effective to have split locos going up and down hills. Normally, you'd have a front, a one at the back, one at the front, one at the back. If you've got long consists, so that you can um, um, you can support the train at the rear, and you don't have it constantly dragging. Because then, if the long dragging train, you're more likely to stringline it. Um, and also, you put a train on the back if it's um, if you're uh, banking the train. Whereas if it's on the, you've got two on the front. Normally means that they're going to be on the front um, for most of the journey, um, and you just need extra power. But it's not necessarily a long train. That's normally why some, even on really long trains, they have mid power as well, where you have a DPU in the middle of the train. Again, it's evening the load out, because otherwise, what you end up with, oops, the brakes off, not on, what you end up with is the entire weight of the train on the front cut, on the coupler at the front of the uh, loco. So these locos are both powered, whereas that coupler is holding the weight of the entire train. Yeah? And so if you've got a heavy train, you put another loco on the back to support the back end of the train, which reduces the amount of weight that this loco, this coupler's got. Good night, Dorito.
See you later, Rexy. Where are we? Uh, last few curves till we get into uh, Forks Creek. And we're stopping here. Looks like the path is already set for us. Does it create drag if you have two different locos, two different power ratings? No, when they run the locos, um, when you apply notch one, if the other loco needs to be doing notch two to double that power, then I think it gives notch two. Otherwise, it's not actually going to contribute um, correctly. Obviously, the slowest loco defines the speed, the maximum speed of the consist. Favorite experimental steam loaf? I don't know. Nice, Ace Rimmer, very good. What's the buzzing noise? That's um, whale um, squeal because they've got you're trying to get all of these whales to go round a corner and it just makes them grind a bit. Nice butter, mister. Should have our uh, waypoint show up in a moment. We're actually on our way to Roscoe Siding Track. Yeah, the tank is overfilled. I'm just waiting for it to come back down again. <laughs> Not too bad though. How many trains are currently released for this guy? I don't know. I think it's, it's a, <laughs> a 
I think it's probably a couple of three hundred. Yeah, this is the last scenario, as Francois has just um, posted. This is the last one tonight, folks. There's Forks Creek, we're stopping there. Three percent grade here. Eh? I can use a lot more brake hold it on this bit, now we're on 3% grade, got the entire train on 3%. Nice one, Ice Rimmer. Good, we're okay to stop, and then I'll change the junction once we've stopped. We're all on. How much longer? Not too much longer, probably about another 10 15 minutes. Presley 1223, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Rusco siding, so let's change the switch. And we're going here. Yeah, but to Mister, I only play stuff that people can get from workshop. I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, subnautica after this. Not a lot, but a little bit. I just want to get that. Uh, I want to get that um, last shark tooth, and then do the uh, do the um, get the cyclops built, and also find out what I need to get scanner room built.
Units are all in the 12. We can speed up to that colossal speed. All of a sudden, 12 is looking like an awesome idea. Gus, I think it might be something like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's an old rope. It's 19, uh, 1930s, apparently. Not as old as I was expecting, if I'm honest. Continuing on a 1.5% grade as we make our way to Roscoe, 1.6 miles. This is a pretty slow part of the route. The, there are other parts of the route, sold UK, that are uh, a fair bit faster, actually. got a big drop coming up here. the next passing loop after this one. over a mile to go.
super paranoid about running the local out of water, so just keep topping it up. Does anything bad happen when you blow the safety plugs? Yep, end of scenario. Because in reality, that's it, the engine's dead. It goes back into maintenance and they uh, see if they can repair it. On some engines, if you blow the cylinders, that's it, end of scenario. Oh, there's West Coast siding. Not sure what you mean then. Like, I was talking about the fusible plugs, Dr. Anthony. If you mean like safeties, you mean the valves on the top. Nothing bad happens to those safeties except for wasting a load of water. It's beautiful, isn't it, Pug Lover? Good night, Buttermaster. I don't think this loco does have water level simulation, so no. Back on that 3% grade. If you're coming the other way, this will be an absolute pain. Hey, Mr. Trank out. Roscoe siding track, need the brakes on a bit more, we're coming in now. We're almost in. Once you're stopped, that'll be it. Is it true that it rains all the time in London? No. <laughs> it's not foggy all the time either. In fact, it's actually relatively rarely foggy.
Oh dear, looks like everything wasn't completed. That's because we were late. I don't care. <clears throat> I don't know quite what was going on with those timings. I was exceeding the speed, I don't know how many times, 25 times, and I'm still 10 minutes late. Never mind, that was a good scenario. Small and mighty, running it down the line. And again, it's another bit of the line we haven't run yet on the route, which is good. I think we've run just about all of it now, uh, other than a few odd bits. Right, that'll be it for tonight, folks. I'm going to reorganise the schedule uh, now that Chatham Mainline is out, so that we can see some more of that as well as some other stuff um i'm gonna have a quick break and i'm gonna go and then we're gonna do a little bit of subnautica um try and get the cyclops built um otherwise than that if you are not stopping on then thank you very much for watching uh, much appreciated and um i will be back tomorrow 8 p.m for um more train sim live um and uh, if you are staying on then uh hold this thought uh, i'll be back on in just a minute i'm going to put the theme tune on now just to round out the train sim live experience and uh, and then i'll put it on the holding board and uh, until i get back thanks very much everyone if you're staying see you shortly if you're not thanks for watching <laughs>